Welcome to chapter 11, this is Sean. In chapter 11, we're going to talk about reporting in the digital age workplace. The main purpose of business reports are to convey information, answer questions, or solve problems. If you think about creating reports uh, for work, they revolve usually around one of these three items. For instance, a sales report. It's conveying information and answering questions as far as the performance of the company. Uh, sometimes you put together a business plan or a strategy report. These help with solving problems. So business reports, the main purposes are conveying, answering, and solving problems. Some basic report functions. Informal reports present data without analysis or recommendations. These are routine and often periodic, and sometimes they're done automatically by software programs. However, the more popular and more impactful reports are analytical reports. Now, these not only provide data and findings and analyses, but they also draw conclusions and give recommendations. They're intended to persuade the readers into a specific course of action. That's why they're so much more powerful. Organizational strategies. Direct strategy, readers are informed, supportive, and want results first. An indirect strategy, readers need to be educated, need to be persuaded, and may be disappointed or hostile. You can tell, um, based off of uh, your audience, what type of strategy you need to take with your reader. Now, report writing styles. Typical report formats, digital are the most common right now with PDF files and web-based multimedia reports. Infographics are very popular right now. And infographics are uh, designed, uh, designed illustrations that um, provide a difficult or a hard to understand uh, statistic or number into an illustration. And I'll just show you a couple, uh, a couple examples of uh, infographic. This infographic is what is paralanguage. You can tell that infographics take complex numbers and give a visual identity to them. Digital slide decks. Digital slide decks are PowerPoint, like I'm showing you here, or Google Slides. Email. Email, sometimes with a memo or a letter report attached, obviously are sent through company email. Forms and templates are also used. And also manuscripts. Informal reports. Email and digital formats. PDF documents are the most popular delivery format. Some reports are animated and may be hyperlinked to other content. Slide presentations can be converted to video also, just like this one. Slide decks are a condensed image-rich format not intended for verbal delivery. So, applying the 3 by 3 writing process to reports. Step 1 is to analyze the problem and purpose. Step 2 is to anticipate the audience and the issues who your readers are. Three is to prepare a work plan, lay out the report, build bullet points. Four is to conduct the research and find that research that supports your findings. Five is to organize, analyze, interpret, and illustrate the data. Six, compose the first draft. Seven, edit, proofread, and evaluate your report. The elements of a work plan for a formal report, one, you have a problem statement. What is the main uh, problem that your report is trying to uh, either prove or disprove? Next, talk about the statement of purpose, including scope, limitations, and significance of the report. Next, you want to show your research strategy, including a description of the potential sources and methods of collecting data. Next, 
outline the factors that the pro of the problem into manageable chunks. Next, establish a work schedule. Now, gathering information from secondary sources, there's a lot of research databases out there. IBA Inform, Factiva, Justor, Business Source Premier, and LexisNexis are just a few of them. A common source that I see often is Wikipedia. This is not a good source for information. Maybe on, you know, uh, you know, unprofessional things or hobbies or television or something like that. But Wikipedia isn't very accurate because the fact that the entries are written by individual people, not researched. Some print resources that a lot of people don't use anymore, but I'm old and I use them. Books and periodicals. I used to have to go to the library and look up on the Dewey Decimal System books, but uh, now you can go to libraries all across the world thanks to a computer. Evaluating web sources. There's a lot of web sources out there, right? And I want you guys to be able to evaluate what is a good web source, right? First, let's start with what is the date of the web article. You want to make sure that you pick an article that is uh, recent. Uh, make sure that it's recent news and research, recent research. When was the website last updated? And is anything out of date? A lot of times when putting together information on technical issues, make sure that it is within the year. Authority. Who publishes and sponsors the page? Is there any biases there? What makes the author an authority on the subject? Is the contact information available? Right? Make sure that they're real. Examine the content. Is the purpose of the site to entertain, inform, persuade, or switch sell? Because if its purpose is to sell, it may not be true. Who is the intended audience? How does the content compare with uh, other content? Do the facts seem reliable? Can you find errors in spelling, grammar, and usage? Can you detect bias? Conduct the primary research. So there's primary research and there's secondary research. Secondary research, obviously, is going out and finding books and, and, and research that somebody else has done. Hence, secondhand resource. You can also do research yourself, and this is called primary research. And the common primary research methods are surveys, which online are very easy, interviews, observation, and experimentation. Now, when we're documenting information, to avoid plagiarism or copying other people's work, you got to give credit whenever you use the following. Another person's ideas, opinions, examples, or theory. Any facts, statistics, charts, or drawings that are not common knowledge. Another person's exact spoken or written words. Paraphrases of another person's spoken or written words. And visuals, images, and any kind of electronic media that you did not create. It's important that you practice the fine art of paraphrasing. Read the original material intently to comprehend its full meaning. Then you're going to write your own version without looking at that ori original. Avoid repeating the same grammatical structure of the, of the original and merely replacing words with synonyms. Make sure that you reread the original to make sure you covered the main points but did not borrow specific language. You still need to give credit to the original author, but again, this helps put your own spin on something. Now there's two documentation formats that are commonly accepted and probably all of you that are in college are very uh, very aware of these. The Modern Language Association, which is MLA style, and then the American Psychological Association, or otherwise known as APA style. MLA and M APA are very similar. Uh, except in MLA, the author's name and page is placed in the text. 
and then the complete sources are listed in a works cited page. Whereas in APA style, you list the author's last name, date of publication, and page number placed near the text reference. Now it also changes based off the type of publication that you're working with. Then on the last of your uh, last of your report, you show uh, a list of sources called references. When and how to quote. Beware of overusing quotations. Use direct quotations for three purposes only. To provide objective background data and to establish the severity of a problem as seen by experts. To repeat identical phrasing because of its precision, clarity, or aptness. To duplicate to duplicate exact wording before discussing and criticizing. Some tips on creating effective visual aids. Using graphics is very important, especially with complex data. Graphics can clarify data, create visual interest, condense and simplify data, and make numerical data meaningful. This is why visual aids are so uh, impactful. It's important to know what type of visual aid to use, and you can use the objective to match with uh, the type of graphic. A table is effective to show many uh, exact figures and values, whereas a bar chart is great at showing and comparing related items. Line charts are used to demonstrate changes in, in data over a period of time, and pie charts are to visualize a whole unit and the proportion of its components. A flow chart is great for a uh, process or procedure. An organizational chart is a great way to show a hierarchy of elements and how they interact with each other. And a photograph, a map, or illustration creates authenticity, spotlights a location, and shows an item in use.